What's up everyone? Thank you so much for stopping by for another video. I'm Colt Caparoon. This video has been requested over and over and over since I mentioned it one time in one video. And I'm finally set up now to do some screen recording stuff and so lots more content like this coming. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe tab so you get notified when I upload sweet new videos. Honestly, everything in this video should go for pretty much any genre of music. A lot of the things that I talk about are very principle driven. What I wanna do is get you guys to understand the concepts behind what I do, and then I'll show you what I do for sure. But these concepts usually will apply to every genre and pretty much all situations. And I think this way because I work on so many different genres, so hopefully that this helps you. So let's talk about microphones for a quick second. I choose the microphone for the lead vocals based on the character of the singer and what microphone fits that singer the best. So my lead vocal microphone is kind of always changing and depends on the singer. My background vocal microphone and for stacks and harmonies and all that kind of stuff, which is what we're talking about in this video today, I use the Shure SM7B. Almost on 100% of the stuff that I work on, almost 100% of the background vocals and harmonies, it's almost always a Shure SM7B. Link in the description to go check it out or pick one up if you would like. There's also links in the description of this video to go over pretty much all the gear that I have and all the gear that I use if you guys want to see it or pick any of it up. So one of the things that I'm extremely adamant about in terms of producing and mixing is knowing exactly the goal that you're going after, knowing exactly the result that you're trying to accomplish, and then you do the things X, Y, and Z that get you to the place that you already knew you wanted to be. So with that being said, when it comes to stacking and layering vocals, how many layers is appropriate for the song that you're working on. So I wanna show you guys an example of a principle that I follow uh, that helps guide me through how many layers do I want to actually put in a particular song. Okay, so we're gonna jump into a session here and check out what I've got. Uh, this is the best way that I could come up with on how to explain this principle, so bear with me. What I've got is I've got three channels here. Uh, each of them have a signal generator on it generating white noise. And we're gonna pretend that this is our lead vocal and that it is two unison and vocals singing the exact same thing, panned left and right. And so let's take a look at this. So if we turn our first signal generator on, we can see that right here, that it is a level of minus 24.1 LUFS. So this is our lead vocal. Now the interesting thing is if we turn on the background vocals, that are panned left and right. Obviously this volume gets way, way louder. So now that this is much louder because we have all three of them going, if we pull this down 4.7 dB, now we're back at the same exact level within the mix, air quotes, that we once were with just the lead vocal. So what I'm trying to get across here is the more layers you have in a given song, in order for the vocal to be the same perceived volume uh, within a mix, the more layers you add, the further back and the quieter the vocals actually have to be in order to maintain that same level within a mix. And so the end result that I'm after dictates how many layers I put in. So if I want the vocal very close and reaching out of the speakers and touching my face, I might just use a single vocal. Or maybe I use this technique where it's a single vocal and two unisons pan left and right, but the unisons, the left and right, are much, much lower in volume than the lead vocal just to bring in a little bit of width and a little bit of space. And so Simultaneously, the less I care about that vocal being super close and reaching out of the speakers and touching my face, the more apt I am to add a bunch of layers that pushes all the vocals away from me, but makes them much bigger and much wider sounding. I hope that all makes sense because I don't really know how else to explain it, but I feel like it's an extremely important part. So now let's jump into a song that I actually produced the vocals on and let's take a look at some stuff. Okay, this is a song by Ty Black. It's called Go Little Lady. I produced the vocals on this one, so I'm just gonna play you like a little bit of the chorus here so you can get a vibe for what the song actually is. I can never let you go, cause you know the song about the way you walk. Got the fellas looking at you all night long. Drop it down low when they hear your song. They say go little lady, go little lady. Stacking out the Okay, so that's the song. That's the first half of the chorus. Here's what the lead vocal sounds like on its own. Song about the way you walk. Got the fellas looking at you all night long. Drop Okay, and then if we add in the unisons, which these are uh, two more layers panned left and right. 
song about the way you are. Got the fellas looking at you all night long. Chop. Okay, so that's three vocals now. So in this particular song, we added a low octave as well. Two of them panned left and right. And so with all of the main vocals that are kind of stacked up to, to be one cohesive vocal sound, this is what it sounds like. Song about the way you are. Got the fellas looking at you all night long. Chop. So that's a lead vocal and two unison vocals panned left and right, and then two octave down vocals panned left and right, tuned and time aligned to sound as closely to the original lead vocal as I could get them to sound. Okay, so let me show you what this vocal sounds like with no pitch correction and no timing correction whatsoever. This is the lead vocal. I'm gonna put it in the mix here. Okay, let me solo these vocals so you can hear that. Now, Ty is a, a fantastic singer, and so this is not super drastic. Okay, so that's just the raw, raw vocals. So then I would always set the timing of the vocal first and then pitch the vocals accordingly. So here's them time aligned to the lead vocal. Song about the way you are Got the fellas looking at you all night long Drop it down low when I hear your song Okay, and then this is the vocal pitched and timed Song about the way you are Got the fellas looking at you all night long Drop it down low when I hear your song So you can hear that like each step just makes the vocal sound a little bit tighter and a little bit more polished so my personal preference on tuning for the lead vocal is I, I don't really personally prefer to hear the tuning. I want it to be spot on and I want it to sound really great, but I don't actually want to hear the tuning. And so I try to keep my tuning in the most natural way possible. Your mileage may vary. Maybe you like the T-Pain thing. Maybe you like not hearing any tuning whatsoever, but that's totally fine. Um, but this is how I approach tuning a lead vocal. Now for the stacks and the background vocals, again, it depends on what the goal is. If I want all the vocals to meld together, whatever vocals I want to meld together into a single cohesive vocal sound that is perceived as one vocal, the tighter I will tune them. And the more I want it to sound like multiple singing or a crowd, the less I will tune them to the lead vocal. Now on these harmonies and stacks and unisons, I'm not actually tuning them to be flawless. I'm tuning them to sound as closely to the lead vocal as possible in this particular song. So that leads me into the next topic, which is timing. Now on a song like this, where the goal is for the all the lead vocals to be you know, put together into one cohesive vocal sound, I'll go through and I will actually pocket the vocal and time align every single syllable to be as closely to the lead vocal as possible. Sometimes I'll do this uh, like actually slicing syllables up and nudging them around uh, and then crossfading obviously. And sometimes I'll use elastic audio. In this particular song, I used elastic audio. Okay, so then there's one more section in this course where there's some big gang vocals and it's basically the, the hook of the course at the very end here, which I'll play for you now. Okay, and then if we just listen to the vocals here. And so this is a good example of what I was talking about in terms of what do I want the song to sound like. So basically we've got our lead vocals that sound like this. Okay, and then we have got our background vocals that I wanted to sound like a crowd. So I've purposely not pitched them and not time aligned them and they sound like this. Okay, so massive difference than when you put them all together. Obviously, it sounds. And then in the track. Okay, so that's another good example of how I would approach things in terms of the more people I want it to sound like, or the further away I want the vocals to be, the less close I want them to be, the less I will tune them, and the more layers there are, and the less I will time align them. And so this sounds like a, a handful of people singing this. Okay, next let's talk about EQ and compression. Now on a lead vocal, I'm not gonna get super into that because you should do whatever's appropriate for the lead vocal in the context of your song. And so this is not a tutorial on how to mix a lead vocal necessarily, but let's just start off by saying that I compress the <laughs> out of all my vocals. Like, I compress my vocals really, really hard 
don't care, I do what sounds right, not what people tell me to do. Now my lead vocal here is actually running through a whole bunch of hardware, so I'm not gonna get too into what all I'm using on that. However, we are gonna go over what is all on my background vocals since that's what this video is about. So on these doubles, these unison doubles that are panned left and right. So the first thing we got is our tuning. I use Waves Tune. You can use whatever you want. Don't care. Uh, and then second is a multi-band compressor, the FabFilter Pro MB. And I just use this to tame some of the S's. Which I have doing very little on this particular song. And then next after that, I'm using the Brainworks uh, SSL 4000E. And you can see that right here, I've got it high passed at like what is this, almost 200 hertz, and then I've got it low passed at 12.9, and basically what this is doing, it's cutting all the high end sizzle out of the vocal and taking all the boominess out of the vocal because I, I just want, I don't want your ear to be drawn to these vocals. I just want them to make the vocal feel bigger and wider. And so to me, a lot of the high end, uh, the sizzleance and the presence of a vocal is what draws your ear to it. So since these vocals are panned left and right, I'm getting rid of a bunch of high end here. And then right here, you can see that I'm boosting uh, 5 dB at about 1.2. Use your ears when you're doing this. Don't just copy these settings. Make sure you use your ears. This is what I found was appropriate for this. And so let me bypass all of these and then I'll put them back in. Oh, and then I'm also running the UAD uh, 176 compressor. And so that's what is on these unisons. So let's bypass all this. Here's the vocals without any processing. Okay, and then if I put the deesser back in, so it's doing very little, but just touching the harder S's. And then if I put the EQs back in, a lot more mid-range, a lot less presence in the vocal. And then if I put the compressors back in, and it looks like I'm hitting these vocals about 10 dB, but they were also compressed on the way in. When I'm tracking, I'm usually compressing a vocal between 10 and 15 dB on the way in. So these background vocals, even though this compressor plugin is only hitting about 10 dB of compression, these actually have closer to 20 or 25 dB of compression on these background vocals. So then let's look at the octave down here. Now it's basically the exact same thing. I've knocked off quite a bit of low end and high end, boosted some mid range, um, and compress them as well. Now on these lows, I don't have any effects. I should say that on the uh, unison vocals, I have some, some effects here. Let me go back to these real quick. So, that's dry and I've got some delay on them. Now, on my low octave vocals, I have no effects. They're completely dry on this song. And basically because I don't want them to muddy the vocal up. I want the vocal to stay super crisp, super clear. And sometimes adding reverbs and delays on low octaves or low harmonies can muddy things up. And I didn't want that to happen. So I left these vocals completely dry and basically doing the same things as the unisons. Getting rid of some low, getting rid of some high. How hard am I compressing these? Some about the way you all got the Not nearly as hard, uh, about five or seven dB of compression. But again, these vocals were tracked uh, with pretty heavy compression on the way in. So if I wanted a particular vocal to be more in the mix or less in the mix, here's kind of one of the things that I would do. Say go little lady, go little lady, yeah. So we're gonna use these uh, low harmony background vocals as uh, an example here. Basically what we're gonna do is if I pull this high pass all the way back up and then let's add like a bunch of 14K here and we're gonna copy this over to the other vocal so it's exactly the same. Song about the way you are Got the fellas looking at you all night long So you can kind of hear how that low harmony like grabs your ear a lot more. Uh, let's put it in the track here. Song about the way you are Got the fellas looking at you all night long And then let's, let's just really crank it and let's really crank some mid-range here on that low harmony, on that low octave. Song about the way you are Got the fellas looking at you all night long 
So now that, that low octave is really grabbing your attention and I didn't want that to happen. So that's kind of why we ended up going this route with these background vocals and here's where it ended up. Now, if I wanted this this low octave to command even less attention, then I would honestly pull this down even further, uh, somewhere down around there, and then I would maybe move the mid range point down to 1k to from 1.5, and so this is gonna we'll copy that over, so both low octaves are getting the same treatment. And now this is gonna actually take away presence. It's gonna make that low octave even less noticeable. And so you use this EQ technique. This is how I do it. I use these different EQ points and, and then uh, obviously in conjunction with level and balance and panning to get the result that I'm after. And again, I know exactly what I'm after before I do something. Now, if we go to this big crowd thing here, let's take a listen to that. Go, little lady, go, little lady, yeah. Now this is compressed pretty hard. It's almost distorted sounding because I wanted this to sound like it was big and in an arena and I, I wanted it to just be as big as possible. So compressing the snot out of it. Here is my EQ on some of these vocals. Yeah, I, they're all exactly the same because I wanted to simulate them all happening in the exact same space. And they're all compressed. Go, little lady, go, little lady, yeah. Considerably 15, 17 dB of gain reduction. I'm um, using the FabFilter Pro C2 on this. Now, the reason why I would uh, lump all these together and EQ and compress all these vocals individually, even though they're going through a bus over here with more EQ and more compression, is because I want them all to kind of get their own level of processing and tame them all. Because something that's interesting about vocals, the further away someone is from you, the more compressed their voice naturally sounds. And so it's one way that you can actually have compression is to move the singer further away from the microphone. It's kind of some natural compression. So if I want to simulate a vocalist being far away from me, say in an arena or in a concert venue, their vocal needs to be compressed on its own to simulate them being far away from me. So that's why I've done this on each individual vocal. And then again, on this bus, I'm boosting like some mid range. So all those background vocals are going through this bus here. Go, little lady, go, little lady, yeah. And then we've also got uh, more compression happening on the bus. Go, little lady, go, little lady, yeah. And then we've got some uh, Valhalla Vintage Burb, one of my favorite reverbs of all time. Uh, and so we've got our mix at about 15.6, a four second delay in a dirty hall sound. Cause again, I wanted it a little grittier, a little bit dirtier sounding. Uh, and so this is kind of my setup, no pitch, no time correction for any of this stuff. Those are just all the raw vocals for that particular part. Go, little lady, go. And so again, if we put all these vocals back in here. Say go, little lady, go, little lady, yeah. And then that's what it sounds like all as a whole and in the track. So this video was a little bit all over the place. This is my first video doing it exactly like this with screen grabs and everything. And so I hope that this really helped you and I appreciate you tuning in for another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Any other videos that you would like to see in the future. Links in the description for everything that I talked about today. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.